Okay, hi everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. Today what we're going to be going through is the um, importance of the Ka value and we're going to be just um, looking at what it is and how we can eventually use it. Okay, so before we were looking at equilibrium, so hopefully you've reviewed all the videos and that has in some way helped you. Um, now what we're going to be looking at is um, how to apply equilibrium principles to acids. Okay, so what the Ka value is, it's, it's just like the K value, which you saw already in equilibrium, it's the products divided by the reactants. Um, but the Ka value is looking at acids, okay, looking how acids behave. So it's known as the acidity constant. So the Ka value is the acidity constant. Okay, so let's see, let's write up a reaction for an acid and see how we can write up a Ka expression. So, one um, common acid, acetic acid, which is the vinegar. So if we have a look at the acid, um, and acids are generally immersed in water, so we have aqueous as a state, okay, and we add in water into this, and water does not have a concentration, it is just a liquid in its pure form, um, and it gives you back and forth reaction, um, and this is an acid, so the definition of an acid that you should know is that an acid donates its hydrogen, okay? So this is going to be responsible for donating our hydrogen to your water. So your acid is going to donate a hydrogen, which will mean it's not this hydrogen here, it's this hydrogen on the end, okay? It will basically mean that you'll get CH3COO minus because that H plus, that hydrogen had a H plus, it, it, it's H plus, so now the overall charge on this acetic acid molecule becomes negative, okay? And then because water has accepted an, a hydrogen, this becomes H3O plus, okay? Now, um, and both of these are aqueous, okay? So, the pH of an acid um, has nothing really to do with this. Well, it does, but indirectly. It has more of how much of hydronium ions you have, okay? Because these are going to give you the pH of the system. But we'll look at that when we're analyzing pH. Okay, so let's have a look at how we actually write out the Ka value for this. So the Ka value for this particular acid would be the concentration of um, your ions... O, o minus times by the con concentration of your hydronium ions and then you divide it by uh, the concentration of your reactants which is so here we have products divided by reactants okay so the reactant is just the concentration of CH3 COOH so we really don't care about water in this equilibrium because water has no concentration, as we spoke about in the past. Okay, so now that we have a Ka expression, um, we can uh, analyze it and compare different acids to each other based on the Ka value, and we can figure out how strong those acids are. If something has a very large Ka value, a very small Ka value, um, then we can say something about that particular acid, okay, and we'll do that next. So the Ka value is defined as the products divided by the reactants um, for any given equation. So this is the Ka value for acetic acid. Let's have a look at the K, um, another acid, another very famous acid, HCl. Now what you know about HCl is it's a lot stronger than CH3COOH. Um, so it will produce Cl minus as its um, conjugate conjugate base plus H3O plus. This is in aqueous. This is aqueous as well, and that's liquid. Okay, so let's write out a Ka value for this expression here. So as you can see, this expression here is calculated the same way. It's defined as Ka because it's looking at an acid, all right, A for acid, and we have Cl minus times by H3O plus, concentration of H3O plus, divided by the concentration
concentration of your HCl. So the amount of HCl. Now I hope you can see this, but HCl is at the bottom there. Okay, now let us just compare the two Ka values together. Now what you know about acetic acid is that most of it, um, most of it doesn't ionize, okay? It remains in this state. There's more of this. More of that. And then there's less of this. Because acetic acid isn't very um, acidic, okay? It has a pretty, um, you know, a pH of about 3 or, or 4 or something. So it's not very acidic. It doesn't go forward a lot, okay? It remains more in this state here. What that means, okay, if you have more of this, okay, and less of that, then basically your Ka value will mean that you have less products as a whole, you re remember that these are products, okay, and you have more reactants, so those increase. These are reactants, okay? So what that tells you is that Ka value will be small, all right? It's going to be small for acetic acid, okay? And the Ka value for HCl, because HCl ionizes so well, okay, it turns into ions there, then you have a lot of products, okay? So your product proportion at the top, your product um, at the top is high, and whereas the HCl just remaining as HCl in the system is going to be very low, because most of this um, HCl actually gets rid of its hydrogen by throwing it over to water. Okay, so most of it is very active. Okay, so you're going to have a very small concentration left. Most of your concentration is going to be made up of this and this which causes the Ka value to increase. Okay, so this will be B. Okay, which means that when you have a big Ka value, it means that you have a very powerful acid. When you have a small Ka value, it, rem it means that you don't have a very powerful acid. The acid isn't very good at ionizing. Okay, so the last thing that I'd like to speak of is speak about is the notion of a very very strong acid and what happens in that case so if you take a case of um, sulfuric acid for instance sulfuric acid is H2SO4 plus water gives us okay it's actually diprotein because it can um, you can donate two hydrogens but essentially the first reaction is because there's two hydrogens to donate um, all of it will actually become ionized because um, H will go off to H to water and it will produce H3O plus. So that's because of the water accepted a um, hydrogen. And that will become H because there will be, there's two there, there will be one left. HSO4 minus. SO4 minus. But because this is a complete reaction, then you have like, this will actually ionize one more time, but we don't care about it now. Because it's so powerful, then um, it's 100% forward. And what we know about systems that are 100% forward, they're known as complete reactions. You can't say that they will be at equilibrium ever. So this reaction here, the Ka value does not exist doesn't exist. And that's basically because um, Ka values imply that you can reach equilibrium. Okay, And if you have a forward reaction, a complete reaction, that means that you will, won't get to equilibrium. Okay, So the Ka value um, does not equal to, in this particular case, H3O plus times by HSO4 minus divided by H2SO4 Basically, because um, this will be 100% created, and you will have zero of this. And when you have a, a, some number divided by zero, it's undefined, okay? So you can't actually define Ka value. It does not exist. Okay? So I hope that um, you've understood the concept of Ka and why it's important. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at like calculations involving Ka values. Um, so yeah, as always, um, thank you for visiting. And if you have any questions,